Well, to discuss this more, we're joined all the way from Chicago by Stefan Lenman. He's a writer and radio host joining me live on the phone. Uh, Mr. Lenman, uh, many call this Black, uh, Black Friday, as almost all major markets around the world are experiencing massive losses. Is this the beginning of another U.S.-triggered recession? Well, that very expression crossed my mind. Of course, the answer is nobody knows. Uh, it's no surprise to me, and whether this, this triggers something uh, that I call phase two of the protracted global depression, uh, understand very clearly, uh, we, are, we are in the midst of a protracted global depression. Gerald Salenti, the, uh, the very astute trends analyst, calls it the greatest depression. I agree with him, but it wasn't accidental. This was manufactured to happen, and I decided that I would write about it today. I've written so much about it, uh, and, and, and I have a book coming out in September on how Wall Street fleeces America. Well, this is part of how Wall Street fleeces America. This was manufactured to let the banks grow bigger and stronger, the big ones, mainly the wall, big Wall Street banks, the big European banks, and, and make ordinary working people in the country's most affected bear the burden. They will get what uh, Barack Obama calls austerity when they need when they need help because they're suffering they're losing their homes their jobs their futures and, and instead of helping these people the way it was done in the 1930s with the new deal the new plan coming out of america and coming out of europe uh, uh, across all europe is austerity i mean this is crazy it's like it taking a sick person and making them sicker by giving them not medication or treatment by, but by giving them some kind of a uh, a poisonous substance to make their bodies suffer more, I can't imagine what these people want to do, except really I know what they want to do. They, they, they want to get stronger. They, they, want to, they want to destroy in America what I call destroying America's social contract. Can I read you a brief quote? Rahm Emanuel, on November 6th, 2008, when he was the White House Chief of Staff for Obama, he gave an interview to the Wall Street Journal and he said, you never want to let a serious crisis go to waste. What I mean by that is that it's an opportunity to do things you couldn't do before. And he didn't mean populist things, good things, helping people. He meant helping the powerful business interests who benefit, who profit at the expense of ordinary people. And in America and across Europe, we call it austerity. It's going to get deeper and tougher. Well, you know, bad policy begets bad results. And if people don't have money to spend, corporations don't make as much money. So we see markets tumbling. I absolutely expect something dire to happen, even in the markets. But whether it began yesterday, no one knows. Well, Mr. Lenman, I mean, many say that it seems like the U.S. debt deal has managed to calm some ordinary Americans, but largely failed to convince global markets. I mean, w w with regards to what you said, what needs to be done at this stage to bring the situation under control? Well, the debt deal really did more harm than good. I, I, I always wonder... Do the markets really understand this? The knee-jerk reaction was positive, then it turned negative. But the debt deal, there never was a debt crisis. Uh, the, uh, America would not default. That would never happen. Uh, uh, it, the ceiling would be raised. That was absolutely guaranteed. And, and what this debt de de deal did was in, in, instead of stimulating growth that's badly needed, the debt deal will starve growth. So you starve growth. At some point, you will starve profits. You'll put more people out of work. Unemployment will grow. There'll be more human suffering. They'll have less money. They'll spend less. Again, profits will suffer. Economies will go down. I, I hear economists who I respect say, a second recession is guaranteed. I think it's worse than a second recession. I see it as leg two of the protracted global depression, and this could go on for years, and uh, there won't be many countries that will escape this. This could, this could hit anybody. I would, say, I would say the country that may come out of it the best is China, because they have vast reserves, and they can invest them in growing, in growing their economy, and that's exactly what they did. So they
Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, August 5th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Welcome everyone. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. You can check me out on YouTube at uh, ddarko2012 or on Facebook. Um, the link will be posted in the YouTube video's description with, along with all the headlines and the links uh, in the order that they were presented. Uh, with those links, you can check out uh, the Global Government News Group on Facebook. Uh, people post uh, videos and articles up there along with um, all the uh, news commentary videos that uh, I post as well. All right, um, so I usually start off with the economy if you're a new listener, and then uh, I'll go into um, basically war on terror, war of terror, liberty, sovereignty, uh, news, uh, including police state, and then I usually finish up in the third video um, with uh, Big Brother surveillance, uh, eugenics, and um, anything that has to do with this with uh, society and that uh, odd news and that maybe some science. So um, lots of news in the markets. Obviously, I'm just gonna kind of blast through here, read you some headlines like I normally do. You can go in there and check them out. Dow swings 416 points as Treasuries sink. Treasuries fell, sending two-year yields uh, up from a record low and the dollar weakened as stronger than forecasted jobs growth ease concern the nation will slip into recession so same rhetoric that's going on like in 2008 2009 2010 dow plunges and this was the restructuring uh is just constant uh quote crises right engineered crisis by the banks dow plunges 512 points here's what's bothering the stock market so it's worst day since december of 2008 u.s stocks and weak in basement and um Go in there and ch uh, check that out. Uh, just more news covering it. China stocks slump to seven-week low as economic uh, concerns spur global route. And then moving on uh, to the EU, European markets continue to plummet uh, on Friday despite a brief upturn throughout the day. Hong Kong stocks close 4.29% lower. And then we have two-year Treasury yields uh, drop to a record low. Prices for Treasury securities jumped Thursday, sending the yield on uh, the two-year no to record low as investors rush to U.S. government debt in search of safety. So as Canadian uh, currency declines for a second week on global slowdown speculation, and it's usually a good reserve currency along with, the, I believe it's a Swiss franc, and uh, even the euro is uh, considered uh, by some of the elites. Uh, I think it was Soros, Soros was quoted saying that the, that the euro is actually the new uh, reserve currency for the world. Uh, but either way, it was down. It says here, dollar stumbles lower after wild trading. That's in Australia, of course, the Australian dollar. Then moving on to commodities, they've been taking a, a big dip here. But the heating oil futures were up for uh, 78, and Brent crude was up uh, basically to 12. But uh, gas oil futures were down $21, and I'll cover that uh, here shortly in the gas department and uh, agriculture. It says here, basically, uh, $34 cocoa was up, and uh, said moving down here, we have some things that were down. Uh, cotton was down a tad, and wheat, and then uh, soybeans were uh, also down uh, significantly, along with wool. Then uh, moving on to copper. Copper's uh, big news here, down $11.85, now at $411. Gold at $1,651, down $7.20. And then silver futures at $38, so it just uh, uh, dipped below the $40 mark. Market, uh, being down a dollar and twenty cents. Then central banks join gold rush or rush to gold. Says here central bankers are ramping up their gold buying as they seek to diversify the reserves away from the what the funny money and other beleaguered currencies. So and uh, it says here copper falls caps biggest weekly drop since June 2010 on growth concerns. So there's your copper news and. Uh, what's going on with it gas prices expected to fall in coming weeks this is what i was just talking about one bright spot after a stock market plunge lower gasoline prices wheat drops for third third day as russia romania undercut u.s export prices wheat futures fell for the third straight day on lingering concerns that cheaper grain from eastern europe will erode demands for supplies from the u.s the world's top exporter and i think they had an export ban from last year because of the quote droughts and uh and fires uh, you know, there's a good chance that that was caused by um, uh, scalar weapons or just uh, uh, what they're doing, uh, whatever technology that they have uh, to heat up the ionosphere uh, out there and, uh, you know, 
Alaska and Puerto Rico and Norway factory price inflation at near three-year high. Prices at British factories last month climbed at the fastest rate in almost three years, underlying the squeeze on businesses even as global demand appears to weaken. Then German, German industrial output unexpectedly fell in June as construction slowed. And uh, then we have payrolls grow as unemployment ticks down. So the U.S. economy added more jobs than expected in July. But, it's, of course, it's not enough for a real recovery. And uh, that's why I said that's the restructuring, which is what uh, – that's why they say a jobless recovery, which uh, I don't know how the hell you could have a recovery um, from a, quote, recession, a slow of growth uh, in the economy and, uh, you know, be successful at that without having anyone uh, uh, working. I mean, obviously there's people working, but look at what the jobs are. They're dead-end jobs. It says here uh, that the uh, they added more jobs than expected in July, and the unemployment rate edged down a move that should help ease concerns that a new recession may be around the corner. And uh, so it says here, sudden and unexpected burst of downsizing causes layoffs to explode nearly 60% in July. And uh, you can check that out with the links. It says... Uh, Obamanomics unemployment drops for uh, drops to 4.3 percent for college grads, spikes to 15 for high school dropouts. So you can check that out. He often tries to present himself as a champion of the less privileged American society, talking about the poor. But in recent months, the third year of pre the presidency, unemployment has been going from high to higher among the least educated Americans, while it has been trending down for uh, college graduates. So this uh, tells you uh, something different from what I was just saying. Um, saying that uh, uh, people that do have uh, uh, college degrees are uh, getting hired, um, and that's like uh, what mostly finance, uh, government jobs, or well, I mean, no, I know they're they're cutting government jobs, but there's always going to be hiring. They're always going to be hiring for like the IRS and that. Um, but finance jobs and then healthcare jobs are eugenics, and um, so we're going to move on here. Uh, but unemployment is weighing on consumer confidence, as J.P. Morgan exec, and it says that uh, the challenge in the United States is unemployment. Unemployment is clearly weighing on consumer confidence. That's because they don't have any freaking money to spend. So, yeah, they're not going to be too confident in being able to spend if they don't have anything to spend. So they refer to what? Uh, food stamp use rises to record 45.8 million and that's that's a big deal for the united states which was at one time considered to be you know an individualist country that didn't you know like to rely on government for anything and so that just goes to show you uh what the restructuring is it says here u.s yields evoke Eisenhower era as growth stalls. Treasury bond yields are plunging to levels seen in the 1950s. I'm concerned the two-year recovery in the world's largest economy is stalling. Okay, we're going to move a little faster here. The U.S. is not a triple A credit, says David Stockman. And government will borrow $72 billion in debt auctions next week. And it says uh, that Congress, now that Congress has raised the borrowing limit. So they said they're not going to borrow more, but the government will borrow $72 billion in debt auctions that, next week. Uh, uh, basically because they raise the nation's borrowing limit. Then we have U.S. borrowing tops 100% of GDP. It says here U.S. Uh, gross debt shot up $238 billion to reach 100% of gross domestic, uh, domestic product after the government's debt ceiling was lifted. So great, talking about a $14 trillion cap. So just a bunch of BS and um, don't know how that's sustainable, but somehow it is. China joins Russia in blasting U.S. borrowing then uh, China says that uh, debt financing unlikely to save U.S. Yeah, that's right. You can't borrow your way out of uh, – it's not spending. It's borrowing. It's not like the money is just sitting in there in a treasure chest in the treasury and we're borrowing, you know, and we're spending it. No, we're borrowing it on interest. So it's here sales of uh, $1.5 billion debt next week may be lowest since 2003. And U.S. consumer credit jumps by most in four years. So it's here the Reserve Bank of Australia lowers forecast for Australian growth this year, raises inflation view, and global markets on the brink of crisis. And that's what the Guggenheim CIO says, and in favor, brace for a global reboot and a war. Hmm. Double dip quite likely for UK, London Business School professor says. Then Greece in panic as it faces change of homework proportions. Talking about a, a silent bank run going on in Greece. Then debt-hidden students urged to sell their kidneys. Go check that out. And then Postal Service losses mount. Uh, uh, basically said it lost $3.1 from April through June. Brings losses to 5.7. They'll probably 
fault is fault. Productivity Commission recommends removal of online tax threshold. Productivity, you're going to you're gonna stifle productivity by uh, doing that like Amazon in Illinois where they drove them out of the state. Then next up we have... And police, again, shut down another uh, uh, little girl's lemonade stand because she didn't have a permit. Fannie Mae to ask U.S. Treasury for $5 billion. And the Bank of Scotland posts losses of 794 million pounds and cuts 2,000 jobs. Another failure for taxpayer-backed banks. This is GGN. I'm Darko.